All right, today we're reviewing. Today we're reviewing. Metal Gear Solid 1. Hi everybody, Luke Butterfield here with Gaming Graded, the channel where we give games a letter grade. Coming at you today with a review for Metal Gear Solid 1. Metal Gear Solid released on the original PlayStation on September 3rd of 1998. Directed by legendary game director Hideo Kojima, the game was a revolution of the 90s because of its blend of stealth and action, coupled with its high production value and cutscenes. This narratively driven action game was something that was unique as games started to jump into 3D. And I mean, during this time, you had a lot of firsts that were popular. I mean, you have Ocarina of Time that is the first true open world. You have Super Mario 64, which is the first true 3D game that feels good to play. And you have Metal Gear Solid, the first cutscene driven narrative action experience. I mean, Metal Gear Solid is the blueprint for the narratively driven AAA experiences we have today. Look, you can't deny the game's influence. I mean, you don't get The Last of Us, you don't get Uncharted, you don't get stuff even like The Witcher without Metal Gear Solid paving the path. At the time, Metal Gear Solid became a game that was synonymous with the original PlayStation due to its intriguing narrative, its interesting characters, and its decent gameplay variety as well. My first experience with Metal Gear Solid was at 13 years old in 2011. I remember at the time, while the graphics were dated and the gameplay was old, it was the touching narrative of Solid Snake and his transformation that really captured me. So with the release of the Master Collection in 2024, how does Metal Gear Solid hold up? Is it still the classic that we think of today, or is it just a little bit dated? Let's discuss. So what is Metal Gear Solid? What does the gameplay look like? Metal Gear Solid is a stealth game starring Solid Snake, a spy that must sneak into Shadow Moses Island, an Alaskan military base that terrorists have taken over and are threatening to launch a nuke. Gameplay is from a top-down perspective, as you use the game's radar system and first-person view to sneak around the environment and dispatch guards. The player starts with nothing. They must search Shadow Moses Island for gear and weapons to help them complete the mission. On top of this, the player has a radio called the Kodak. With the select button, you can call your support team at any time and ask them for advice. This is really cool because it's like having an in-universe strategy guide in the game. You can call your commanding officer and he'll give you tips and tricks. These codec conversations also serve as a storytelling tool as Snake gets plot and exposition from his support unit. Ultimately, the gameplay revolves around using stealth, guns, and gear to explore Shadow Moses Island, going from story beat to boss fight to story beat. The narrative and the cutscenes really are the driving force here. It is what's keeping the player engaged, and it is what contextualizes the gameplay around it. So that's a very quick overview of Metal Gear Solid 1. Let's start by talking about what works here. Let's talk about the good. I want to start off by talking about Solid Snake, the main protagonist. Solid Snake is the greatest character in all of video games. Ever. Part of the reason this is, is because of his arc in Metal Gear Solid 1. At the beginning of MGS1, Snake is a man of violence. He has killed his best friend, Frank Yeager, and his father, Big Boss. At the beginning of the game, Snake has given up on people. He lives a life of solitude in Alaska and doesn't really want to be bothered. Snake sees violence as something that is intrinsic to his genes. He feels that he cannot change that. His entire arc in this game is about Snake choosing to let other people in. It's about him choosing to let go of what he thinks he is based on his genes and learning to live his life in spite of his genes. The game is all about him choosing the person he wants to be and finding something to fight for in his new life. I love Snake's arc so much because it is about living in spite of your trauma rather than being a victim of it, a prisoner of it. 
caged to your fate. Snake realizes he was not born a weapon and can choose the life he wants to live. Following up on this idea, I adore the theme of Metal Gear Solid 1. The theme of this game is genes. No, not those ones. I'm talking about genetic makeup. Metal Gear Solid 1 is all about the idea of genetic predetermination. This is the idea that you are born a certain way, your genes tell your life story, and there is nothing you can do to change that. Metal Gear Solid 1 soundly rejects this idea. The game states that human beings can choose the life that they want to live, that you are not a victim of your genes, but instead it asserts that human beings can choose the life that they want to live, regardless of the genetic makeup that they are born with. It's a very specific theme, but it's such a wonderful theme. I mean, especially for people that come from families with histories of genetic illness, people who may not be born a certain way, people who may lament their parents. Metal Gear Solid 1 tells us that we can live in spite of that and still live good lives. We have choice no matter what. To me, watching Snake choose life over his past of violence is one of the great video game moments of all time, and it really solidifies him as my favorite game character. Another thing, shout out to Shadow Moses Island. This is one of the greatest video game settings of all time. Part of this is the game's shadowy conspiracy that's associated with the island. But why I think the setting works so well is Shadow Moses feels like a character. This is partially because of the game's Resident Evil-like structure. What I mean by this is you are constantly going through the military base. You're backtracking through rooms and spaces, and you get to really get a feel for the space. By the end of the game, I felt like I knew Shadow Moses Island like the back of my hand. They also do a really smart thing here where Shadow Moses is very industrial and cold but also it feels like a real space that people live and work in. There's a believability to the environment design here. Shadow Moses' dark concrete hallways lend well to the unfolding conspiracy. It makes the entire place feel foreboding as there's something going on that you can't quite put your finger on. Following up on this, the plot of Metal Gear Solid 1 is amazing. And it's partially because of the game's simplicity. Look, I get that the Metal Gear series is convoluted, but I do think one and three have the most straightforward plots. Metal Gear Solid One is a straightforward story about a government conspiracy to build Metal Gear Rex, a walking bipedal robot that can shoot nuclear warheads from anywhere. It's very straightforward, but there are enough twists and turns to keep you on your toes. I was constantly engaged by the game's conspiracy as I was watching it unfold. Metal Gear Solid 1 does a great job with its mystery by leaving just enough breadcrumbs, and those breadcrumbs come together at the end to create a solution that's logical-ish. <laughs> it makes enough sense to work. Also, shout out to the core radio support team in Metal Gear Solid 1. It is undoubtedly the series' best. I mean, you got Colonel Campbell, you got Naomi, you got Mei Ling, you got Otacon. These are all complex characters that have really good arcs throughout the game. It's very pleasant to call them on the radio, and they always have something interesting to say. On top of this, Metal Gear Solid 1 also sports the series' best cast of villains, the notorious Foxhound unit. You got Liquid Snake, you got Revolver Ocelot, Psycho Mantis, Vulcan Raven, Sniper Wolf, Decoy Octopus. These are some of the most iconic bosses in gaming. I mean, most games would kill to have one villain as cool as these guys. And I think part of the reason why this cast of villains works so well is because of the boss fight design here. The boss fight design in Metal Gear Solid 1 is immaculate. Every boss fight is this well thought out concept and there's some gimmick there that's really interesting and makes it feel different from the last. I mean, look, Psycho Mantis is obviously the highlight with his fourth wall breaks and messing with your TV, but there are so many other awesome fights here. I mean, you have that great fight with Sniper Wolf in the snow where you're both maneuvering around trees trying to get the angle on each other. Vulcan Raven is this awesome fight in a warehouse where you're ducking and weaving around corners trying to get the angle on him so you can shoot him. I even love the final boss fight with Liquid as it's this 
awesome bare knuckle brawl on top of Metal Gear Rex. There's a scope to it that still holds up even for a PlayStation 1 game. The boss fights here are always a great treat because they produce a lot of gameplay variety. You're forced to think about the core mechanics in a way you don't normally have to in Metal Gear Solid 1. And I think it's worth noting one last thing. Shout out to the trauma dumping these bosses do when you defeat them. The game does a great job of giving you context for its villains and the game is very anti-war, and you can really tell how war has ruined these villains' lives. It creates very compelling villains that might not necessarily get the most screen time. One final thing I want to say, and this is a controversial opinion, I think Metal Gear Solid 1 does play well when you wrap your mind around the very specific way that it does play. Look, I'm not crazy. The game is old and clunky. But once you get a feel for the controls, the game is a lot of fun to play. You'll knock on a wall to get a guard to come around and you'll take him out and his buddy will hear it and you'll play in a claymore mine and you'll run around and the guard will blow up. The gameplay is very simple, but there's just enough options here to make experimenting and messing with the guards fun. HOT TAKE, take alert. ALERT! I think rather than bitching about old games playing bad, we should approach older titles with the context in which the gameplay was created in mind. Being able to appreciate older games in spite of the dated ways they play is a skill. I mean, it's like reading older books. With how expensive games are to make, it is not realistic for every game to be remade. We have to build gaming literacy with older titles. One more last thing for real this time. I do think the soundtrack in Metal Gear Solid is incredible. The tracks here have this awesome industrial digital edge to them with a whole lot of sneaky thrown in. I think of the alert theme in particular. This is an iconic gaming track up there with the Legend of Zelda theme or the Mario theme. It creates this dire feeling of having an entire base on top of you. When I think about Metal Gear, I think of this track. For me though, the standout track here is The Best Is Yet To Come. This is a somber yet serene Gaelic folk track that plays over pivotal moments in the game. I remember getting weirdly emotional the first time I finished Metal Gear Solid, and this track played over stock footage of polar bears in Alaska. There's a serene beauty to the track. There's something so beautiful and sad that the instrumentation and vocals provides that pairs beautifully with the game's dire message about nuclear annihilation and anti-war. And I think the song pairs beautifully with the game's theme as when you translate the lyrics, they're all about reveling in the simple things and enjoying life, much like how Snake must choose to live his life how he wants. It pairs beautifully with Snake's arc about living. Look, Metal Gear Solid is an important game for so many different reasons, but it's by no means flawless. Let's talk the bad. One thing, I feel like Meryl is underutilized in the game's narrative. She's a crucial part of the story as she's the first person Snake opens up to in about six years. She's a young soldier, she's a rookie, Snake sees himself in her, and they bond over living this experience together. But I feel like we don't get enough time with Meryl to really see their relationship develop fully in a satisfactory way. I get that living through a traumatic event like this would bring two people close together, but I needed just a little bit more to fully buy in. I think I needed about one more set piece with Meryl. Maybe something where she's fighting, you're fighting, you're both competent, you have each other's backs, and it really sells her growth as a soldier and her bond with Snake. One last thing, and I know I just ranted about the game actually playing well, but the sniping here just feels bad. This really becomes a problem in the game's two sniper boss fights, where they do something ambitious where you have weapon sway. And I think that's a cool idea for the time, but really when aiming already feels pretty off, the weapon swaying back and forth just makes the shooting feel that much worse. You can take in-game medicine to make the weapon sway go away, but even then the sniping just doesn't feel super great. These boss fights are doable, but they are a low point of the game. Metal Gear Solid is an important game to me because it is the genesis of the types of games that I love to play. Give me games with cutscenes that drive the narrative. Give me games with intricate lore. Give me games where the 
characters just sit there and talk. This obviously doesn't have to be all games, but I do think games that have cutscenes should not just be disregarded as interactive movies. Narratively driven experiences are just as valuable and important as gameplay driven experiences. Frankly, I'm kind of sick of gamers acting like a game is an affront to the medium because it's cutscene driven. Games can be many different things. That is what is so great about this medium. And Metal Gear Solid is one of the greats of this medium. It holds up because of its high production value, its emphasis on story and characters, while also giving the player tons of weapons and items that are fun to play around with. Metal Gear Solid couldn't be a movie. Its long runtime is spent thoroughly developing its characters and its world, and the game is better. The story is better because you play it. All in all, the story of Solid Snake living in spite of his genes, choosing the life he wants to live, is a story that will stick with me for the rest of my life. It's a powerful narrative about choosing who you want to be rather than letting others in your past define who you are. Couple this with the game's influence. Couple this with the first game to be cutscene driven, the first game to be narratively driven, and you have a game that is just as influential as Ocarina of Time or Mario 64. All in all, Metal Gear Solid, it's a masterpiece. Remember, this channel is a collection of bad opinions. Love what you saw? Hate what you saw? Drop a comment down below. Let's discuss. Remember to like, subscribe, and ring that bell. Videos are always coming.